So the channel was a little quiet last week, uh, and that's because I was busy wrapping up um, a pretty challenging project that I thought I would uh, sort of talk about and explain like how I how I made some of these animations for the New York Times. Um, you know, I think it's I always talk about how you know my hope or my goal for people learning to make machine learning images and video is that like you can sort of take your work and use machine machine learning as a tool and like as a way to generate samples or uh, elements and then you like use your own skills as a as an artist to bring things together um, and I'm always looking for examples of where to talk about that even if it's in my own work and you know the truth is that sounds really easy when you're on paper and saying like hey just do this and uh, the reality is that it's actually a lot harder than that sounds because a lot of our tools are not yet really set up in the way that Photoshop or Illustrator or After Effects are to like make this stuff happen so that'd be kind of maybe nice for folks to hear how I produce these these images um, <clears throat> So I'll link to this video or to this URL um, in the show notes, and then I'll also um, link to some. We also made some some print images for this as well. Um, it ran in last week's Sunday Times. Um, had some nice, like, really big graphics, which I was not not uh, waiting. I was not expecting. I knew we were going to do the first um, main image uh, as the lead for the paper, but I didn't realize we were going to do these other ones really large too. Um, I would have probably changed my process a little bit more had I thought that through. Um, but anyway, it was a really, really fun project. And so I'll talk a little bit about how it happened and some of the process that got there. Um, so I think uh, Frank, I'm going to, I'm not even going to try Frank's last name because I'll butcher it, um, who is an art director at the opinion section, New York times, um, reach out to me like sort of late Friday, um, the week before this was due, uh, asking if I wanted to work on it. Um, he sort of sent me the article, which obviously also has to do with machine learning and other things. So I thought it was really, really interesting. Um, we talked again, I think sort of Saturday afternoon, um, and the idea was just like, you know, we need stuff by Thursday morning, essentially, to run in the paper. Um, they have really short timelines. Uh, so I like sort of jumped right on it and spent a lot of Sunday just generating images. Um, I'll show a couple of things in just a minute from that. But, um, you know, uh, it was a very, very short turnaround. And if you've done any of this stuff with machine learning, you know that it is a big challenge to generate uh, a lot of work in a short period of time just because of training time and that sort of thing. Um, when Frank reached out to me, he had sort of sent me two pieces that he was really interested in. Uh, the first was this Big Bygan piece, um, which, you know, sort of takes an animation and then runs it through Big Bygan and creates this, like, very, like, uh, stochastic, noisy sort of image. And I can sort of see where Frank was coming from with this is that the article talks a lot about, um, you know, the images they get from these fMRI uh, models where they're trying to translate what the brain sees. Um, like sort of look like things that might be in the real world, but they're like very noisy. And um, I think Big Bygan is a great example of that, where like you can see there's like fish or chickens or other things in these images, but like they're like very abstracted. Um, the second piece that Frank sent me was this, um, which is one of my next frame prediction models um, used on flowers. So again, um, this idea of like, you can kind of tell what it is, but you kind of can't at the same time. Um, so we just sort of riffed on that. So I sort of spent most of Sunday um, during a bunch of different sketches and other ideas based on some things that Frank and I had talked about. Um, these are actually the sketches from, from that uh, round of revisions. Um, you know, so I had sort of tried to take that big bi model. These are very sketchy, by the way. Like, I would have done a lot more of these had we gone with any of these directions. Um, you know, trying to think about, like, is this the brain? Is it that sort of thing? Um, I was playing a lot with big bi I really like this version, although I don't think it works as well as I would have liked it to. But this idea that you can take textures from an image and apply them to Big Bi again and get maybe something that is sort of the outlines and shapes of faces. Um, you know, again, trying to play with the next screen prediction model to sort of get this idea of like brain waves or other things. Um, worked with this idea of like projection, um, which is again, sort of this like almost thing about how people were seeing um, things. It's almost like having it reflected what's in your brain onto your face. Um, this would have been like sort of the animation for it. Obviously, this is just a really rough big by game model, um, but this idea that you know you can almost project what people are seeing back onto their face. Um, I will pretty much like for the rest of my days try to get like a sketch like this through an art director um, with this very early next screen prediction model I had. Um, the idea that this is very abstract. This was sort of the sketchy video I sent them of this sort of thing. Um, so this was the first round I said I. You know, I probably spent like 200 or 12 hours just sketching out ideas and trying to make it happen. Um, Frank ended up like being like, this is all cool, but like I had a very specific thing in mind, which was this idea of this eye and then maybe some of my flowers. Um, so what we end up doing is I end up sketching a couple other examples. Let me see if I've got other examples here. 
um, just of sort of like, um, you know, additional things that we could work on. Um, this sketch, like almost pretty much like, this is pretty much what we ended up going with for the, for the lead. Um, we did a lot of revisions around the eye and like I cleaned up some of the edges a little bit, but um, it pretty much ended up being this, um, which was like kind of fun in the sense that, um, you know, we already had a good idea of like what it, I already had a good idea of how this, how this would animate. So I knew up front that we were going to do animations as well as this print piece. Um, so I was really trying to make sure that we could do both. Um, so with the lead image, like we started with the static and then we sort of like generated the animation from it. Um, this would have been the other version I was looking at doing. Um, I like the very like sort of more noisy and chaotic version of the one we ended up going with. Um, so where we ended up with was, you know, this, let me see, it's, um, probably not there, it's by here. Um, so we ended up going with this, um, which is just, you know, basically I take a lot of the next frame prediction video we produced um, and I brought it into After Effects and did a ton of like little detail masking, um, you know, generating each of these little loops. Like you'll see sort of this thing. Actually, let me do this. Let me open this in um, QuickTime Player so we can watch it loop. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, the idea that like, uh, how do you make each of these things loop? Like next year prediction is not a model that like StyleGAN you can actually do looping in. So you have to do, I do a lot of like little weird After Effects tricks. Um, there's actually a lot of uh, a model called slow-mo, which slows video down. So I'm slowing stuff down to like a snail's pace. And then um, if you look closely, you'll see there's sort of a place where it like animates back to frames, um, that sort of thing, using some tricks I found on After Effects, um, you know, using stuff like fading it out and then having it come back in. Um, this is a really, really challenging project because again, next screen prediction like doesn't want to loop naturally. So getting to a place to do that uh, took, a, took a ton of time and um, I probably spent most of my hours looking at uh, YouTube videos on After Effects, um, trying to figure out how to get stuff to, to loop or like make it fake loop or you know try to hide some of the where the, the places where it does loop. Um, it's a big challenge to do that. Um, and then we had this idea of like uh, Frank really had a had a bunch of other sort of secondary animations he wanted to do, um, and for those we were thinking like you know it should really be something more than flowers. Um, so I ended up generating. I mean this so like. You know, on the technical side, I have six GPUs um, in my local like sort of uh, server that I run, um, and it took me all six GPUs running probably pretty much constantly for about two or three days um, to generate this project in the short term around time we had. So we generated these loops, and these are like a again a bunch of different next frame prediction models. So each one of these is a different layer. So there's probably three or four models here, and then I'm like collaging them and you know, masking them and doing other effects inside of. Um, inside of uh, after, after Effects to get them really working. Um, you know, I think the fish one um, is probably my favorite from this series, um, but it did turn out really, really well. Um, so again, it's about like, where do you hide the fade out? How do you layer these things so that it feels like it's a pretty seamless blend? I mean, this is a six second video, five, minute, five second video. So, you know, making a five second video loop uh, has some challenges inherent in it. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, we probably, I probably generated about 30 different next screen prediction videos, um, all in order to make this thing work because, you know, again, on such a short turnaround time, also next screen prediction ended up being like a really good version, a really good example for this, uh, because, you know, the truth is you don't really need to run it for that long. I ran a lot of these for maybe 50, 100 epochs, um, and they're all really short videos. They're all short, like three to four second video samples that we were feeding it. Um, so that way I was able to generate these, you know, pretty much overnight. So a lot of times Frank and I would check in in the afternoon one night and I would set up a bunch of stuff to train overnight, send him more things in the morning. We'd have another round of erosions and we'd do it all over again. So, um, yeah, this is like a very, very challenging project because there was so much stuff we had to throw at this. And obviously next screen prediction is pretty chaotic. You don't really know what you're going to get. So I had to like train way more stuff than I'm used to. Um, and just sort of like hope for the best every morning, uh, and get lots of different pieces, um, I learned a lot about, you know, how to make the mess, the most out of an extreme prediction model with like very small little animations and very slow changes. A lot of these are actually, um, static images that I'm then manipulating in after effects. So whether I'm like zooming in or translating them or moving the position or, you know, doing little effects here and there to make these animate and then bringing them into an extreme prediction, um, to actually like do the predicting model and that sort of thing. Um, we had this idea of like doing this house. Um, and I searched all over like Unsplash and other places to get a house that worked. 
Um, but I really love how this one turned out. Um, you might not even really recognize it as a house at, at this point, but I just love how, you know, and again, this is a static image that we then translated into in After Effects, and then we ran it again um, through an extreme prediction model. And it just generated these really beautiful, like, you know, again, very organic, but still very angular images. Um, and this one actually, like, I'm, I think I'm most proud of the loop here. Um, you might not even notice where it loops, but there's like a little uh, place where we, I sort of fade in um, the next round. So this is one where I'm like really happy with how the loop turned out. Other ones, I wish I could, I had a little more time to get them a little bit better uh, in terms of animation um, and really like perfecting that loop, but so it goes. Um, but yeah, anyway, this was like a really, really fun, really challenging project. On such a short turnaround time, it was really, really tough. Um, but I learned a lot by just throwing a ton at the machines and sort of like trying to figure it out from there. Um, I feel like next stream prediction is sort of like one of those things where like lots of people see it and uh, it's really cool, but it sometimes takes a lot of effort to really like sort of um, feel like you have more control over them than you do uh, or like managing that control in a way that feels, um, you know, like you are somehow the artist involved and not just throwing a thing at a machine. Um, but on this project, I felt like it really got to a place where like I was controlling a lot more um, of what I wanted to see and, and really understanding how to make these these output in a way that I was expecting them to. So, um, yeah, really hoping to do more work like this. I've you know, with this, I've already gotten a couple uh, other art directors reaching out, asking about things. So I'm pretty excited about seeing where this can can lead. And, um, you know, I hope this is also a good example for folks out there who are sort of looking like, OK, how do I take a machine learning model and do something with it? beyond just, you know, generating new images from it. Um, you know, what's the next step there? And this is sort of like me starting to think about like, oh man, where are all the tools that I could have used in here to actually save myself some time? Or like, how would I do things differently in order to to produce these images quicker or just knowing what tool set I need? Um, so early days of this still, but I'm really, really excited about where this headed um, and where this piece landed. Out, landed um, and uh, looking forward to doing more and, you know, hoping to see what other people do in, in similar experiences as well. Um, so if you're interested in learning more about this, obviously there's a bunch of videos um, here on the YouTube page about next stream prediction. Um, you're also welcome to drop a note in my Slack channel. Um, but yeah, I hope this video was interesting to you. This is like the first time I'm really talking about my own work, which feels a little weird um, as I like to I like to keep this channel really about tutorials and helping other people make work. But um, I've had enough people ask like, hey, can I can you talk about how you make your work and that sort of thing? So I thought this would be a, a fun chance to do that. Um, anyway, if you like it, let me know um, and I'll try to do more of this. But um, thanks for now.